Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is show you how we can differentiate these two examples here by something called the chain rule. Now I've got to take you back though to basic differentiation of expressions of the form ax to the power n. Here we've got y equals ax to the power n and you should know that dy by dx is given by an times x to the power n minus 1. So for instance if you had say y equals 5x cubed then dy by dx according to the rule we have here would be the 3 times the 5 which is 15 reduce the power by 1 and you've got x squared. You don't have to always have y in terms of x. You could have, for instance, y in terms of some other letter. Like, for instance, suppose you had y equals 6t cubed, say. Then dy by dt, not dy by dx this time, but dy by dt would equal 6 times 3, which is 18. Drop the power by 1 and you've got t squared, 18t squared. So how do we differentiate these two examples? They don't have this particular pattern structure, ax to the power n. Something far more complicated than that. Well, there's a way that we can get around this problem, and it's by using something called the chain rule. I'll show you. Okay, let's just put the chain rule here. Now, if we're going to find dy by dx, then we can think of this as the same as doing dy by d something. Okay, it can be anything we like. We'll just put a dot there for the moment. d something times, and it must be the same d something divided by dx. It's as if these two, because they're the same, cancel out. And that would leave us with dy over dx. dy over dx. So what can we use for this d something? Well, it can be any letter that we like, as long as they're the same. I'm going to choose t, say. So I've got dy by dt times dt by dx. And so what we have is something called the chain rule. So you should try and learn this rule. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight that there. So do try and learn that. Okay, so how can we use this to help us differentiate these two examples? Well, first of all, what we can do is we can say that the 3x to the 5 plus 2, let's think of that as t. So what we've got is that this is equal to 2t to the power 4, where essentially t is the bracket here. 3x to the power 5 plus 2. So how does this help us? Well, we can find dy by dx by using the chain rule because what we need to do now is we need to find dy by dt and then times it by dt dx. Well, dy dt is very easy because we've got y equals 2t to the power 4. That's like this kind of equation here. It's got this format. So therefore dy by dt is going to be 4 times 2, 8, drop the power of t by 1, so you're going to get 8t cubed. So we could write that in as 8, but instead of writing t cubed, I know that t is 3x to the 5 plus 2. So I can write that in as 3x to the power 5 plus 2. That's the t bit, but remember it was 8t cubed, so we've got to write that to the power 3. 8t cubed. I'd always recommend that when you do this, you put this in brackets, okay? It saves you having the possibility of ambiguous statements, especially when we start differentiating trig functions and exponential functions. Okay, so we've got this. That's dy by dt. Now we've got to times it by dt dx. Well, we know that t equals 3x to the 5 plus 2. So we've got two terms that we should be able to differentiate. 
we can differentiate 3x to the power 5. It's got this format, and we know it will be 15x to the power 4. So we can just write in here 15x to the power 4. The differential of plus 2, well, that's a constant, and that goes to 0. So, therefore, that's it. All we need to do now is just clean this up. 8 times the 15 gives us, so oh, what does it give us? 120. 120, and then we've got x to the power 4, put that in next, and then we've got the bracket. 3x to the power 5 plus 2, all cubed. And there you have it. Okay? Dead quick. Now I wrote this in blue because quite often I don't actually write this down. I just think it. Okay? I just think it. I just say to myself y equals 2t to the 4. So what's the differential of 2t to the 4? Well it's 8t cubed. But I write my t in as 3x to the 5 plus 2. And then I say to myself times it by the differential of what I nominated as the t. And that is 3x to the 5 plus 2. Times it by that differential and you end up with 15x to the 4. Okay, I just pop that in there. So I generally don't write this, what I've written in blue here, but it's just there if you want to write it in. Okay, let's try this one. y equals 5 times the cube root of 4x minus 1. Well, before I start, what I want to do is write this in index form. I can say that this is equal to 5 multiplied by 4x minus 1, all to the power of a third. Remember, the cube root is a third. If it was the fourth root, it would be a quarter. If it was the square root, it would just be a half, and so on. OK, so we've got that y equals 5, bracket 4x minus 1 to the power third. So to differentiate this, what I'm going to do is think of this as equaling 5t to the power third, where t is clearly 4x minus 1. OK, so to find dy by dx, let's just come over here. dy by dx is going to equal, well, it's going to be dy by dt, first of all, then times dt dx. So what's dy by dt? Well, y equals 5t to the third. It's got this kind of format. So I can differentiate it by saying 5 times a third, which is going to be 5 thirds. Reduce the power of t by 1, so 1 away from a third is minus 2 thirds, so we've got t to the minus 2 thirds, but t is 4x minus 1, so we might as well just write that in as 4x minus 1 to the minus 2 thirds. Again, I'd encourage you to put this in brackets, so we'll just put that in square brackets there. And we now need to multiply this by dt by dx. We need to differentiate t with respect to x. And if we do that, if we differentiate 4x with respect to x, you just get 4. Differentiate the constant minus 1, and you get 0. So it just finishes on 4. So we can just multiply this out. We've got 5 times the 4, which is 20, over the 3. 5 thirds times 4, 20 thirds. Now, 4x minus 1 to the minus 2 thirds. Well, that's the same as 1 over 4x minus 1, all to the power 2 thirds, if you know your indice rules. Okay? And we can multiply this out, and we get 20 times 1, which is just the 20, all over 3 times 4x minus 1, to the power two-thirds. And you could leave it like that, but if you want to put it back in kind of root form, then what you can do is just put it as 20 over 3. Now, we've got 4x minus 1 to the two-thirds, so the 3 here means that you take the cube root, so we do the cube root, okay, of 4x minus 1, and then we square that result, okay, with that 2 there, we square that, okay? So you can either have any of those forms, that's going to be fine. So I hope that's given you an idea then of how we can differentiate 
examples like these kind of ones here by using the chain rule. Alright, 